That's me opening an organic Coke and with that lovely sound, let's get this video started. My name is Trolls and this is the official presentation of our HR Acoustic Grand Ensembles guitar video. And in this video, I'm going to be going through our guitar ensemble, which is comprised of no less than seven different guitars. We had seven different players sit in the hall and play synchronously with each other. And we have five hall mics um, here for the main patches. We call them main, uh, which means that these are the hall microphones. But we also have additional seven microphones for the individual players. And I'll go through that as well. But before we get started, let me just um, show you a little bit of the interface here because uh, there's a lot happening under the hood. Um, if you watch our piano video, I'm actually spending a little more time on explaining the features, but I'll do a very brief overview here. Uh, this is our articulation page. Obviously, you can see everything is loaded here. You can load or unload everything by clicking the perch buttons here. Over here, you can assign anything you want to key switch or controller. So if you want to control the CCs or anything, you can assign it in a very deep way. And it's also um, described in the manual. Down here, we got our sequence, our articulation sequence, and I'll demonstrate that further in the video as well, where you can actually do a round robin cycle through the patches. So you're not just round robin through individual samples and patches, you can actually round robin between patches as well and create these crazy cycles. We have our lovely options page here. You can control anything from velocity to release triggers and all that. And the release triggers are important because this is a hall based recording. So if you don't like the hall, you want the tail to be a little lower, you can certainly do that there as well. And then of course we got our lovely mixer page and I'll go into that a little more in detail in terms of all the features you can load and save here. And we got some EQ presence and stereo field as well that can be controlled up here. And obviously any setting you do, um, I have some sort of rather personal settings I like. Um, I'll be saving up here and you can always access them. So, but without further ado, let's just get uh, rolling into it here. Um, obviously for the main mics here or in the main patches, we have sustained staccato, bar talk, tremolo and harmonics. Anyway, let me try to um, play a little bit here with the patch. <laughs> Cool. Let me try to play that again. And this time around, I'm going to load four players here, not seven, but just four. And they'll be playing a tremolo on top of the composition I just played. Uh, just add a little more texture to it. Check it out. Okay, next up is our staccato articulation and this time around I'm gonna use our mixed microphone position instead so I'm gonna unload these guys here let's see let's dial this guy up here to get a little fatter sound so you can really hear all the mics um, the mixed microphone is a mix of all the individual hall mics and spot mics so it's really the sweet spot and it says and you can see it's a little less memory intensive as well so so yeah let me play a little bit with the staccato here and I'll try to demonstrate both the velocity layers and the round robin obviously there's more of that when it comes to staccato you can really get that beautiful expression of the short notes both subtly and, and hotter as well so it's a it's very versatile <laughs> So let's say, for example, that that was a little bit too wet. Let's go back here and let's load the closed microphone here and add a little bit of the far and white to it. You can hear a difference in the mix. So let me play the same thing here. And that last song, it's actually just me playing hard on the keys and really goes into the velocity layers again. We have a bunch of velocity layers layered in here so you can really play that nice Spanish flamingo kind of type. You can get more subtle, typical classical stuff as well. Let me also try here to add some chaos effects to it. Let's just try something as simple as the arpeggiator and see what happens. And again, I'll try to play um, a little more on the velocity layer so you can get a more subtle arpeggiation and that more sort of chaotic Spanish flamingo kind of sound. <laughs> So that's a fairly harsh sound. It almost sounds like they're playing a uh, Castanets um, 
in the very end of it. Let me just try here to play the same thing again with the mixed mic and it's gonna get even more beefy. I think so cool. That's a classical guitar, you know. Normally you hear like uh, the John Williams Deer Hunter theme or whatever on it, but they can actually be beefy when they're really put in an ensemble form. And speaking of Bartok, actually, let me try to demonstrate the Bartok articulation here. Obviously, it's very similar to what you just heard, but it's all based on round robin velocity based Bartok here. So check it out. You know, that's just played straight on the keys, just to show you, like, you can actually really adapt to tempo or all that. You can play fast, slow, whatever. Uh, let me try to play a little more Spanish fast stuff here on them. All right, let's dive down in a little more subtle realm here and check out the tremolos. One thing I love about the library, and uh, I'll try to demonstrate that a little more on the closed mics and the synthesizer as well, is that when you have something like tremolo, and we did tremolo for virtually all the instruments in the H series, is that there's such a complicated texture going on when you have that many people playing, and it's very hard to mimic in reality just with a simple single instrument and in a, their individual counterparts. You sort of need a group in a hall to do that, and creates these beautiful twirly textures that are just awesome underneath synth patches i think is one of the best things because you get an organic mass down there that you can't really replicate even with granular synthesis it's not really the same here it's really acoustic chaotic beauty anyway let me try to um, before i ramble too much about this uh, try the harmonics here and i'll try to um, again let me try them the the arpeggiator <laughs> You know, even on the ring out of that note, duh, like it's so beautiful. There's just such a clarity, but volume and fatness to it as well. And I think that's really what I learned. Like, um, wait till you hear some like our xylophone, our glockenspiel, or marimba ensembles from H2. They're all super fat compared to their sort of more whimsical individual instrument when you play it. And that's really the magic of doing these ensembles. And it's certainly a concept that we're going to explore more of because I think it creates it makes their instrument more and who said it could only be violins and violas and fancy classical 400 year traditions in terms of ensembles why can't we do other instruments as well and i think this is a great testament to it the classical guitar is somewhat thin sounding but the body you can hear here is just gorgeous but let me show you the flip side of this actually these are our individual microphone positions so i'm going to load the same module that i just loaded but this time around you can see the staccatos and all that but this time around here we got the seven players loaded one in each spot mic uh, and this really allows you again to dial in your mix, really get it accurately, precisely. And one of the beautiful things, and I'll demonstrate that right now, is that each of these guitars obviously have their own character. They're completely different players, different instruments as well. So let me just start to um, demonstrate each mic here so you can hear the beautiful difference between each of them. <laughs> Let me try to play another piece here, a little more complicated, and I'll try to load a couple of different microphones here while I'm playing it, and I might do it like a couple of times, so you can just see how different you could dial in the sound, that beauty of having the choice of seven different guitars loaded at the same time, and you can virtually choose any kind of mixing scenario you want, whether you want one player or three players, and you want to pan them or do whatever you want, uh, it's all there for grabs. <laughs> try that one again here and this time I'll just play with a single guitar instead. I think it lends itself a little more towards that. And 
the range in these solo guys is so beautiful. Let me try to um, just play a couple of them here. Uh, I'll play from the sort of deeper notes and we artificially stretch them a little deeper as well so they have more of a bass tone to it. But check out how like beautiful and fat they can actually sound. All right. Next up is our patterns here. So obviously with guitars, you have to record them both in terms of multi samples. You got your staccatos and harmonics and tremolos and all that stuff. But um, you also have patterns here. We recorded nine different patterns and they're all recorded in fifths. So you can add any kind of chord you want, minor, major, whatever. And we also recorded them muted both sort of a low range and the high range um, of the guitar. And we also recorded them in velocity layers. So let me try to demonstrate some of the patterns here so you can get a feeling for what they sound like and what they're actually capable of. It's a cool, cool thing and a great, great addition to the library because it allows you to get full ensemble playing, real patterns. And instead of just sitting and trying to mimic it with Bartok, whatever, you can really get like real strumming going. And obviously all this is tempo synced as well. So let me just try to dial in the tempo here from 116 to let's say 140 and I'll do the same thing again. And as you can hear, I'm also playing through velocity layers. So you've got those more sort of subtle strums, you've got the more aggressive ones. Uh, let me try to demonstrate uh, another pattern here. Let me play um, another, perhaps a little more complicated thing here again uh, and try to alternate a little more with the patterns. We also have some really cool sort of Spanish drums. So as you can see, I'm blending real-time articulation. So we have like a then I blend that into the actual normal pattern. So you can go like it's just a perfect way of combining them and create more complicated patterns as well. Let me also demonstrate the spot mics for the patterns here. So obviously, again, we're back to our seven players that are gonna play the pattern. And it's really beautiful with this one because if you think it's too overwhelming, it's a fairly fat sound you just heard, you can just take out the players one by run, <laughs> so, so to speak. Um, and uh, you can dial in again the mix you want. But let me start to demonstrate with all the players here and then I'll gradually remove them one by one. So yeah, this is truly the first library where you are the dictator. We also um, obviously have our KSFX 3.0 here. Let me just try to add a couple of things. Let's see, some transform, delay, and maybe add some distortion, degrader and all that. And then uh, let's just see what it sounds like. I should also mention when we say chaos in this thing, um, it actually means you can click on any of these symbols here and all the sample parameters will be randomized every time with the goes for all of these guys. So if you're really into more experimental type of effects, these are just fantastic um, because you can do anything you want and it will really mangle up to 1500 sample parameters um, if you want to go crazy with it. But, uh, but yeah, let's uh, check out the mayhem here. <laughs> Last but certainly not least is our guitar synthesizers and it's actually one of my favorite parts of the library because again we had all these beautiful textures from the whole ensemble and all the other ensembles and it gave us the ultimate freedom to really create 
beautiful organic and complicated patches i think we've gotten used to synthesizers now always being droney or sort of pre-recorded and this and that but now we're blessed with so much content and because we did everything in ensembles there is so much complexity going on whether it's the tremolos or some of the other custom articulations recorded for the purpose of creating patches here there's just so much that can be done there's so much life and organicness and obviously these are more complex i didn't just want to create like normal pads and all that we really wanted to create something more complicated complicated textures that are hard to mimic with traditional synthetic means but let me just try to demonstrate a few of them here so you can hear what i'm talking about in terms of the complexity and textures But let's try to push the envelope a little further here. Um, I'm gonna take my effects rack here, our Chaos Effects, and let's try to add the arpeggiator to it, one of my favorites. Um, and let's do the delay and transformer convolution as well. And we got normal reverb on as well. Okay, beautiful. Um, and let me just try to play um, the same articulation here again. And then after that, we're gonna go in and I'll show you how to sequence through all the different patches. So create a round robin cycle through the patches. <laughs> All right, so obviously you can hear that was a single patch just being played and I switched it uh, in the middle here to Silver Fields. But now let's try the sequencer down here. And this guy is one of my favorite things. So down here, you can see a lot of numbers. The numbers correspond to the patches up here. So one, two, three, four, and all that stuff. Um, if you click this guy here, it'll totally randomize everything. And you have actually four banks of sequences you can make. And in essence, it will sequence through all the articulations just like the arpeggiator. So not only is the arpeggiator working, but it's also arpeggiating through all the individual patches here. And it creates some beautiful, way more complicated textures. So if you thought things were not complicated enough and organic enough, check this out. Isn't that beautiful? I, for me, there is a life in it that I have rarely heard in synthesizers or samples before. And it's simply the sheer fact that there's so much organic content. You have an ensemble of seven different players. You have 10 different patches that have all been synthesized and is all being arpeggiated. So it's an enormous amount of complexity going on at sort of the engine level and in terms of how many samples are being manipulated, this and that. But it's also just musical. For me, it breathes a little more than the traditional synthesizer. And I think one of the things we're trying to do with H and all our libraries for that matter is to is figure out how can we make this stuff breathe more. We're, we're sort of Frankensteining dead samples and trying to make them come alive. And this is really an example of, from my point of view, where they're starting to come alive. I can feel it actually. It's not just dead samples, there's life in it. Uh, let me just try to demonstrate um, another cycle here. And this time I'll add some tremolos from the spot mics on top of it and let's call it a day. Mm -hmm. 